Hey everybody and welcome to Texas Homegrown Music with yours truly, Maylee Thomas. And my guest today is Griffin Tucker. And Griffin, um, you know, I don't get to say this very often, but um, your mother was at my wedding before she got married and before you were even a, a dot in her eye. So wow. it's crazy that now I am interviewing her son on my show. <laughs> so welcome to Texas Homegrown Music heard a lot of great things about you and I can't wait to, to share it with our audience today. Thank so, you so much. I'm so glad to be here. I am so glad you're here too. So I'm just going to start right off by saying that um, the guys in the store have already told me that you're like a child prodigy on learning songs and that it's going to be very hard to stump you at all. I think at one point you were even <laughs> in the store doing some kiss songs Yeah. and the guys were trying to stump you and you were singing them front and back, <laughs> the obscure albums that nobody else really knows about. And uh, so I'm, I'm supposed to sp supposed to throw some things at you, but I think I'm going to spare you today. But <laughs> anyway, so you're a huge Kiss fan, yes. obviously. I know that you're a huge Beatles fan because we, we'll talk about a little bit of that in a little while. But, um, you know, you, you started out playing as a, as a kid. What, what was it that got you interested in music from the very beginning? Actually, when I was really, really young, like under a year old, I was I had this horrible condition called RSV. Okay. Um, and I had to be stuck in the hospital for a, a very long time. And the only thing that would ever calm me down from just like being miserable and just having all this stuff in my throat was Baby Einstein. And, and it was literally just classical music set to just toys. And I was, I was fascinated by both the music and the toys, but... Uh, um, I just kept listening to it, and then later on, like when my mom would take me to preschool or kindergarten, she would play the Beatles radio, and so I would just be listening to all that music. And uh, af after that, then uh, my brother and my dad wanted to learn how to play guitar, and I got dragged along because I was five years old. So we went to Guitar Center, and I found my way into the drum room. And we don't say that word in, on the show, by the way, since we are at oh. the guitar sanctuary. But I'm just joking. <laughs> Well, so you, uh, so you had an interest because of your dad and your brother to play guitar, and that was your first instrument, or no? I, I found my, I actually uh, found like the drum room, and uh, I, uh, I started off with drums, and of course we kept going back, and I was like, I want, a, I want a drum set, I want a drum set, and so my and mom, mom and dad are like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they didn't want a bunch of noise, so they got me an electronic drum set, and they were like, they were like downstairs, and I'm playing these electronic drums, and I'm like, wait, he's actually like getting the hang of it, so. Of course, I started off with drums, and I moved to piano and guitar and bass and all that type of stuff, and the rest is... Well, I was so impressed, like, you know, deep, uh, deep diving into all that's out on the, in, the internet, and you're playing literally every instrument and in so many different songs. I was like, how nice is that to just be able to play whatever you want? And, I, and there's a couple of times I looked on some videos that looked like you were actually playing the drums and guitar. Yes. Um, believe it, I know specifically I, I, I played, I wanted to make sure that I got shots of me playing the drums and the bass and the guitar because for that whole album everything is played by me and everything is, is sung by me. Um, so yeah, I, I, I wanted to make sure that I had like just a little bit of shots. Well before of we start talking about Believe It, I want to talk about um, the Beatles thing and how you got involved in the very beginning of uh, the documentary that was that was put out by our friend Bobby Ch Bobby Greeson, who actually is an artist too, by the way. All these people that are just so gifted in so many different areas. Absolutely. Um, but I was I was watching some videos of you as I don't know eight or nine years old playing Beatles tunes. Tell me about that and what that the door that that opened for you. Well, the thing with learning Beatles songs is that they they were all just so so talented and the way that everything kind of flowed together it gave me a new, it gave me an appreciation for arrangements, which is something that I really focus on when I make my own songs. And actually, um, when I was really, really young and I got like, like GarageBand or something for like my iPad, I would, uh, I would record like all the different harmonies for all these different Beatles songs. So that's where I got, that's where I got my ability to harmonize from. Okay. Um, but yeah, I've, and of course I started off with, on, in a Beatles tribute band when I was eight years old playing drums. Um, so the Beatles, it's, I, I have deep roots in just listening to the Beatles, playing Beatles and all that type of stuff. Well, uh, as you know, and a lot of, a lot of the artists that you probably really admire started out the same way, but to have this generation, um, grab, gravitate to that is just so cool to me because, um, it, you know, their, their music, it transcends all ages and all, uh, everything, right? And styles as well, you know, I mean, uh, 
But vocally, if you can if you can pick up all those harmonies, I still can't do that. <laughs> so I'm extremely impressed with that. So let's fast forward and talk about um, what launched your career, really. And I mean, I hate to say this because I'm really not a not a I'm not going to downplay it, but I'm not an extreme huge fan of some of these shows that try to make you into the artist they want to make you into. But it definitely helps you get out there. So tell us about the American Idols stint and, and how that was. Um, well, the first TV show that I was on was The Voice, okay. and um, when I was when I was on The Voice, I mean both The Voice and American Idol, they're TV shows, yep. so. An element of it is, like, the, the, the positives of being on it was that I got to meet a lot of people who had the same dream right. as I do, which is to play music for a living and, you know, just have fun doing what you do. And um, so that was, that was really, really awesome. And also getting to meet, like, Katy Perry, Adam Levine, Lionel Richie, Blake Shelton, Gwen Stefani, Alicia Keys, all of them. It was, it, was, it was surreal, to say the least, just to get to meet all of them. Um, but yeah, those, those TV shows definitely try to, to make you into the artist that they want you to be because there are certain genres that are more marketable than other genres, but I, I, wanna, I wanted and I still want to, ch to stay true to myself and the type of music that I love making and I want to express myself the way that I feel I should express myself. So. Well, when you said you, you know, it gives you an opportunity to meet other people with the same desires and dreams that you do, did you, because um, I know we've had Maddie Davis on our show who was also on The Voice, and uh, she actually um, said that the best thing that she pulled from it is she found another uh, co writer from uh, The Voice that she still works with today, but are there any artists that you stay in touch with that you met um, from The Voice or? Um, I've, I've, stayed in, um, I've stayed in touch with a couple artists. I know like uh, Brooke Hadela and um, this guy named Cade who I actually met at the, the guitar show a few years earlier. Um, but yeah, I stay, I stay in touch with a, with a few, um, few of the artists that I met there. But uh, it, was, it was really amazing just to reach a whole new audience so that I could right. I could uh, share my music with a whole different group of people that may not have heard me otherwise. So tell me about what it was like after being on the show and coming back, because um, you are exposed to a huge number of people, and um, and when you put something out, they're still going to follow you. Because if you put that tagline, and, and sorry, I didn't realize you were on The Voice too, but when you put that tagline on there, pre, you know, from The Voice or American Idol, it blows my mind how that still gets people to go listen to your stuff. Because it's almost like, okay, well, if they were on there, then they must be good, right? Absolutely. Um, but did you did things change for you after the show, and you know, being recognized by the whole group of people? that otherwise you wouldn't have reached? Absolutely. I mean, I, I got to, I got to, re, I got to, you know, as we, reap the as benefit we said, of that. Yes, absolutely. Re, reach new people and get, and of course I got a huge boost in um, people like looking at my stuff and, like, and finding me everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was, it was crazy. And of course it's, it's a new, it's, I guess it's credibility. Cause like, as you said, if you were on like the voice or American Idol, you must be like some kind of big deal or something. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was really cool to, to kind of reap the benefits. Well, I think probably the big advantage you must have had is that you write your own music. And, um, and, I'm, and I'm so impressed with it because you're just a kid. I'm sorry, but you are. <laughs> you know, you're you're um, about the same age as my youngest daughter. And I'm, I'm looking at through everything that you've done and the songs that you've written. You just haven't lived long enough to be able to write those kind of songs. <laughs> but clearly you're an old soul. And someone that obviously has been listening to a lot of music since you were just, you know, like you said, five five years old, or a year old, thanks to Baby Einstein. And by the way, I'm a big fan of that as well. Yes. <laughs> I, I remember. Um, I remember when I brought my son home from the hospital, Rain, and he just was screaming and crying all between the hours of 11 and 1. We couldn't settle him down, and my husband finally said, May Lee. You were playing in a rock band, and that kid has been listening to rock music late at night. Let's just try that. So we brought him into the living room. We turned the stereo up really loud, and he <laughs> freaking went to sleep at 1130 listening to the <laughs> loudest music you can imagine. Ugh. So it's crazy how these kids that, that are, you know, it's true. 
you know. Absolutely. And for a mom, we know it's crazy when you have that baby inside of you and then a few days later they're out. Well, guess what? They were exposed to everything you were doing while they were in there. So kudos to mom for, for doing that oh, for yes. you. And of course, I know she's a huge music fan because that's how I met her. <laughs> <laughs> I met her following some really killer rock music and that's another story altogether. Maybe I'll bring her on one day and interview her. She's, <laughs> she's got a lot of stories she could tell about our good friend. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Um, well, I want to share a, a song with our um, audience right now called Believe It. And I think that probably was what really, you know, catapulted you into the music world. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I started off like I had other songs before, like Girlfriend, stuff like Who To Be, Need You Badly, all these like popier songs. But I wanted, I wanted my first CD to be my sound and the right. sound that I wanted to like start off my, you know, career my, with my, my and, career and with. build on. Yes. And, and believe it is the title song, and I thought it was the perfect way to title the CD because the song is literally just... Because I write all the music for my songs, but my mom writes the lyrics, and okay. so she wrote it from... Right, she wrote it from my perspective as like living here inside my mind. Music's playing all the time. Okay, I'm, so you know that's something I didn't know. So now I know why um, I say you aren't old enough to live those things. But your mom is. So yes. There you go, Kimberly. I I, I feel you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna share that song with you guys right now, and it's called Believe It. And for those of you that are listening on our radio show, be sure to go to our. Um, YouTube channel so you can see the video but if you're you just want to pull it up it's called Believe It with Griffin Tucker and we're going to play that right now and when we come back we're going to talk some more about um, all the stuff that you're doing and I'm just so proud of you kiddo I really <laughs> am I think you got a really great great career ahead of you so Griffin Tucker on Texas Homegrown Music with Maylee Thomas Believe It and then we'll be right back.
So we're back, Texas Homegrown Music with Griffin Tucker, and um, I'm sure you guys are already impressed that this 19-year-old is putting out stuff like that, because I know I am. So Griffin, I um, obviously I told you earlier that I know about you because of your mom, but um, actually uh, the, other, the other thing we have in common is we both did the Lemonade TV Plus, uh, powered by SoundFi, and, um, which was an, inter it's an interesting platform, isn't it? Absolutely. Live streaming in general, it's a different dynamic from playing live because it's so much more of a conversation when you're playing live because you have the energy that you're feeding the audience and they're feeding energy back. So it's, it's, very, it's very different when you finish a song and that's, that's it. There's well, you know, kinda... it's kind of where we are right now and, um, you know, with, uh, with the whole COVID thing going on. Thank goodness so many of us were able to get to a place where it said, okay, we just got to do this thing. If we want to play, we got to play in our house with nobody listening except for maybe the dogs <laughs> and the cat, um, you know, and if we do these live streams, we can't have a big audience in the room. And it does really require you to enjoy what you do, right? Because oh, you're yes. playing for yourself at that point. Um, and I know for me, I don't think I've ever gotten to a place where I'm really comfortable with just playing for me. Mm -hmm. If you know what I mean? Yeah, I get that. Um, I mean, I, I have two of the greatest band, I had two of the greatest bandmates. I'm now merging Vinyl Device and The Real Revolution. But for, for Lemonade TV, I had Patrick Smith and Joshua Sloan, and they are just a blast to play with. So even if it's not just enjoying doing it just by myself, I just I just love getting to enjoy it with well with I I'm I'm from the old school of because you got to remember um, I, my generation you know we we didn't have this kind of a platform I mean you know we the only kind of recording we ever did was literally on a cassette you know or tape <laughs> recorder right um, and we never got to see ourselves right we, we you know we we had no idea what we looked like to other people because you just you know you couldn't afford to just video yourself and then go back and look at it um and so it's a whole different ball game now with you know everything that we can do and and send to people immediately but i'm just glad that we've decided to step out of our comfort zone for most of my generation but your generation coming up i don't even know what the future has. I guess there's going to be holograms and, you know, where you don't even, you don't even have to be there. You can just record it and have an image of yourself be put there. But I'm so grateful that we have these platforms. And I know that, um, that, that you know, your particular show was very well watched. And I'm sure that you're going to see a lot of remuneration even afterwards. So in case you're listening and you don't know about it, um, it's Lemonade TV Plus, and it's a platform that you could go to and actually download the app, right? Yes. And there's all kinds of stuff on there. I, I was shocked when I opened it up and saw that, you know, we were just one small portion of that. Um, but you can also get some merch from it. Yes. Right? And, um, and we did it for the Texas Music Project, which is dear to my heart because it helps the uh, Texas Children's Hospital in Houston. And uh, which I, I think is just wonderful, Absolutely. and Michael Clay and all the people that are behind that. But um, did you did you find yourself watching other people on Sunday nights and 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 comparing yourself to what their shows were like? Yeah, I mean, there's always that general sense of at least like a friendly competition where you want you want your you want you want to present yourself in the best light and hope that you know. I guess that that you that you at least stand up to the other people who are performing alongside you every every Sunday. But I was the I was like the on the outskirt because I was probably the oldest person that was on the show for oh sure. Gosh. I'm sure I was, <laughs> and I know my good friend John Christopher Davis was on there, and he's younger than I am, so I can say I was probably the oldest person on the platform. But I'm looking at these artists like you, you, you and some of the other ones going, oh my gosh, that they're like that at that age. I can't even imagine how explosive you're going to be in another, you know, three, four, five years, and then decades down the road. Um, when you when you've done as many shows as I have, um, then you'll know why I'm saying that. Because <laughs> I'm looking back at you, saying, "Oh my gosh, kiddo, you you really do have so much talent, and the fact that you play so many different instruments." So we're going to talk about this um, song, "Lead Me." Yes. And um, give me a little bit of background. Leave me, uh, leave me is a shuffle. I know I, I write most of the lyrics. Um, it's 
it's it's an awesome song. It actually has a little bit of um, a little bit of bib biblical references in there. Okay. Um, but um, it's not like a super like overtly like Christian song. But it's got like those little undertones. Um, but it's it's a it's a great song. I released it not too long ago, like maybe two years ago, and um, I love doing it in my live shows. And uh, it's just about it's it's lead me to the rock that's higher higher than I. That's what that's what the biblical reference is. Um, but yeah, it, it's, a, it's a really cool song. It's a fun the, song. I listened to it last night and, uh, you know, I, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I, I'm telling you, I sat in, in bed last night while my husband was snoring and I had to put my headset in so I couldn't hear him. <laughs> and I was shocked at, I, I mean, I don't even know where to put you because the reality is you've got so many different talents. Definitely rock. I mean, you know, you know, you just Absolutely. got the whole vibe there, right? Um, do you see yourself going, uh, you know, exploding into more of that, just deeper into the rock image? Yes. I mean, I, I always, I've, I've always wanted to be a rock artist, and I started off with pop, just kind of like get my foot in the door. Mm -hmm. But I definitely want to get more rock, and of course, the songs that I'm writing for like upcoming albums is definitely going to be even more like rock and like more intricate. Than Tell me about that. Have you been taking advantage of this time off, be, you know, by, by writing? Because I know a lot of my friends, that's what they're doing now. They're woodshedding a lot in their house because there's nowhere to play. Absolutely. I mean, that, as a musician, that's really all you can do. Um, but uh, at the start of 2020, I was, I was hoping to make a new project called uh, Vinyl Device. And um, with some with some problems with with bandmates and constantly like shuffling through bandmates, um, I just decided that I wanted to merge the two projects. But out of out of making trying to make that band, um, I, I've I've written some new songs, and um, I'm even writing more songs now that the now the two bands are merged. And uh, I've definitely I've definitely been spending my time just just being with myself and not constantly just being like, okay, when's the next show? Let's prepare for the next show. It's more just about focusing on the art more than I, I don't know the presentation of the art I guess. So um, so is it in your plans to just do a record where you do everything? Because I know that you said you have a desire to get into the recording side as well. Yes, um, I, I, I was hoping um, of course at, at, at the end of um, I just graduated high school. And I, I was, know, is that crazy? You just graduate <laughs> high school people. <laughs> Um, but I was hoping to go to college for audio engineering and kind of get like a hands-on experience. But of course, with all this stuff, it's kind of hard to be in classes like in person. Um, but for this next album, I'm I'm hoping, and we haven't recorded anything yet, but I'm really hoping that this album is going to be with the Real Rock Revolution and everyone recording it together and live recordings where everyone's in the same room and we're recording all the basic tracks together. Just so we can get that that rock, like that that old-fashioned rock, just energy. See, I already like you because I mean, it sounds like you're really kind of an analog kid over there. Yes. And I love that. And I'm, you know, may not. I even pressed vinyl on my last record, but I loved recording when we were all in the same room and we just put a little plexi in between. And if there's a little bit of bleed over, okay, whatever. You just don't don't mess up. Yeah. Right? And I miss that. And I, you know, of course, we're living in a digital world, but I am an analog girl living in that digital world, and I, <laughs> and I, I can appreciate somebody that likes to have that vibey feel of having people in the room, mm -hmm. and uh, and I think that there's a lot of people that are going back to some of that just because of the energy that they lose when they um, do everything separate. Mm -hmm. You know, I know some some producers and some engineers actually record a digital and then they put it on tape just to give it that extra. Just that extra yep. like old-fashioned feel. Yep. I love what, that. We, we did some of that, and I like that. I, I still, in fact, the last time we recorded, the engineer said to me, you know, I got a whole bunch of old tape from a studio, and I think I saw your name on one of them. Huh. And I said, are you kidding me? He said, no, and, and, and so he left. He was gone for probably 30 minutes. And he comes back with this, <laughs> this tape from 15 years before. Wow. And it was... It had been, you know, it was stuck together. Oh, okay? yeah. So we baked it, basically. Mm -hmm. And it, you know the term where you right. literally bake it so you right. can peel it off. And there was a track on there that I had done that I had completely forgotten about. Wow. And uh, we were able to listen to it. And it, it was really cool. So yeah, there's, there's still studios out there that are using tape. And they're, because they don't really make it anymore, they're having to get old tape and just taping over it.
Isn't that right. interesting? Yeah. It's kind of like finding a painting and peeling off the top and finding another painting underneath. Yeah. Right? So I think that's really cool. Well, we're going to do, we're going to play Lead Me. And I think, um, is, it in, is this the song that um, has got lyrics on it or is that on Believe It? This is, yeah, this is a lyric video. Yeah, so um, I, which is very cool for those of us that half the time have been singing the wrong words to <laughs> songs like um, Bad Moon on the Rise that I thought said there's a bathroom on the right. Or Jet Airliner where I thought it said Big Hotel with a light on and I thought it was about Motel 6. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I haven't heard that one. So um, we're going to play Griffin Tucker's Lead Me. And when we come back, he's going to do a song for us um, that's really special. And he actually just dropped a video from it. So I'll just do that little teaser for you. But if you're listening, this is Texas Homegrown Music. It's brought to you by the Guitar Sanctuary, which is where we are. We're in the amp room right now. And Tupps Brewery, we appreciate you guys and your sponsorship for making this possible. You guys get ready. We're going to play Lead Me, and then we'll be back with Griffin Tucker on Texas Homegrown Music. <laughs> She's got a way of shining light through the darkness She can always see the diamonds in the rough When the waves are trying their best to take her under She can make it through it all when times are tough Got a heart full of love And one full of pain She knows to make the flowers grow There's gotta be some rain She pours out her soul So much more than she ever takes Tell me when she ever get That kind of love
have no doubt that you enjoyed today's show. But I know this, I enjoyed it, so that's what counts, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Griffin, for coming out today. And how about that song? I mean, I actually <laughs> threw him under the bus today by telling him he was doing that on the spot. And you are a talent to be reckoned with because you just nailed it completely. Thank you so much. So, you guys, be sure to tune in next week. We'll have another band here. And I just want to say that I think it's exciting that I can share Texas music, musicians with you that some of you don't even know about. This is a whole new generation of Texas music and talent, and I'm so proud to have you be a part of the Texas Homegrown Music Team. Hope to have you back soon. Absolutely. So thanks, everybody. Peace out. Thank you, Guitar Sanctuary and Tupps Brewer for making this happen, and we'll see you next time.